Firstly, um, we are very committed to the wider environmental challenge that we face as a sector, but as a nation. So this is a great example of our commitment to decarbonise by 2030. And of course, you know, the more that we can come away from grid electricity, um, which is what we're going to see today, then you know, the better chance we have. In fact, we've been on a 10-year journey as a company uh, to come away from our carbon emissions. Uh, this year we are forecasting that we'll be 80% lower, 80% smaller in our footprint than we were a decade ago. Basically this is Yorkshire Water's latest step to invest in renewable energy to benefit the environment and keep customers' bills low. It supports Leeds Council's ambition for the Lower Air Valley to become a hub for green energy and industry. My name is Richard Flint, I'm the Chief Executive of Yorkshire Water and I'd like to uh, welcome our guests this morning. Uh, members of Parliament and Councillors, Councillor Graham, uh, Hilary Benn and Alex Sobel, Members of Parliament. It's great to see you here. I want to say thanks, thanks to Yorkshire Water, all the departments in Yorkshire Water, thanks to Black & Veatch, thanks for everybody who's played a huge part in creating this phenomenal piece of, of architecture for the future and also, more importantly, what all this will do, what it will do for this plant in terms of reducing energy and reducing carbon what it will do for Yorkshire Water in terms of reducing energy and carbon, but also what it says in terms of the water sector's commitment to carbon neutrality by 2030. You are playing a huge, major, instrumental part in changing our economy and our climate and environment for the future. On Monday, we passed a motion um, to incorporate a net zero goal by 2050 into the Climate Change Act. I spoke in the debate on Monday and actually I called for the UK to be looking at a much earlier date. Um, for instance, 2030 would be my preference. Yorkshire Water is the biggest energy user in Yorkshire, is committed to carbon neutrality by 2030. So my view is if Yorkshire Water, as the biggest energy user in Yorkshire, can do it, so can everybody else in Yorkshire and so can the country. So the government needs to move forward, follow Yorkshire Water's lead and look at carbon neutrality by 2030 as a goal and so I'm really pleased that Yorkshire Water as part of that commitment have built this anaerobic digester right here in Leeds. It's a, it's a great day this, it's a great uh, opening of this, uh, our largest investment uh, during this AMP at £72 million. Uh, what we have here is a, is a, is a state-of-the-art anaerobic digestion plant which of course is going to replace uh, our, our incinerator here. Um, What's it going to do? It's going to allow us to really create a circular economy when it comes to, to, to managing waste and improving the environment. So clearly there are the obvious things to do with uh, managing of wastewater and sludge, but the real additional benefit that comes from having this plant is the fact that we can now take that sludge and turn it into energy and power up to 55% of the energy of the site de a site's demand for energy from this plant. It's a 15% reduction in carbon emissions on the site. And that all fits within a, a bigger kind of um, plan. And that plan is to move the company into being carbon neutral by 2030. And that all relates to a commitment for the whole sector, which is all the whole water and sewerage uh, company sector in England will be carbon neutral by 2030. And that's 20 years earlier than the target for the rest of the country.